Rainbow Dash thinks that he or she has followed the process of getting the Gary's Mod models into SFM correctly. Obviously this is not correct because the models are invisible. Now I went to the Gary's Mod site and I downloaded the model pack myself and this tutorial is a quick uh, version of how to get these models into SFM correctly. So we're going to exit out of this question. Uh, Gary's Mod is down right now. Luckily I've already downloaded the pack. Here's the pack here and what we're going to do is we're going to extract it so that it works in, SF, in Source Filmmaker. So in the RAR package, this is the RAR package, or the zip package, whichever comes down, you have to get down to the level where this materials and the models live. Okay. From there, what you do is you open up File Explorer or Windows Explorer, depending on what version of Windows you're using, and get down to your user mod directory. I have a shortcut built into my desktop here so that uh, I can get there quickly. So it actually resides computer, C, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Source Filmmaker, Game, User Mod. I'm going to come up one level to gain. Uh, no, I'm going to stay at user mod level. In user mod, you may or may not have a materials and models folder. These folders must exist on the computer in order for the models to work. Coming back into the zip file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the models and the materials folders. And I'm going to drag them down to user mod. Now if your models or materials folders don't exist, they will after you do the first extract. It's now put them put a models and material folder in my user mod section. If I open up to find the models now, what I'll find is that it created the mod uh, the folder structure underneath the materials folder from the GMod model. And here's all the models. Okay. In order for models to work, they must reside in the proper folder. If I go and look at the materials folder now, models, SSG, Star Wars, and there they are. If I come into my materials folder on my hard drive now, I'll find that it created <coughs> the path down to where the materials have to live. And here's all the materials for the stormtrooper and whatnot else. Okay. Once that's done, we can exit out of our zip file, exit out of our folders, and start Source Filmmaker. Create a session, load a map, and for this particular instance I'm just... Okay, now that stage is loaded, I'm going to create a camera, or just switch to the work camera. Go into the Animation Set Editor, create an animation set for a new model, And if I look, I find that SSG Star Wars Clone Trooper are now in my user mod folder. And as you can see, they're actually displaying in the select model window. I'm going to select just one of them and I'm going to click open. And here you can see that the model actually came into stage. And there he is. I'm going into the motion editor. I click on the root transform. 
hold down the shift, uh, the le left mouse button and the shift key, and I can place them anywhere on the floor. Now, looking at this particular model, by right clicking on the model, I can have a look and see if he has any other body parts or body modes or, or skins that uh, we can change him to. Also, I can test out to find out if he will accept a rig. And now that I've selected rig, I find out that these models will indeed uh, accept a rig. And what that rig does is it allows you to move groups of body parts based on an element, an eye cave function. You see that? I selected his hand and his arm and his shoulder move at the same rate. Okay. Rigs allow you to move the model a little bit easier rather than having to move each individual part separately. Go back into the uh, create an animation set for a new model. And I move down here and I can see that the weapons came in as well. There's the assault or the, the big gun. And we can start playing with this thing in SFM. Anyway, that's a quick and dirty tutorial. Hope you learned something. Hope it's useful for you. And I'll keep making more as required. Talk to you later.